Movie Files here with a brand new fresh out of the theater reaction to seeing the new MCU film, The Marvels. Now, according to the media, this film is unwatchable. It's a complete disaster. It's a mess, and the MCU should just give up, right? Well, we're here to talk about it in my out of theater reaction. Full review coming in the next 24 hours. But let's talk about this movie without spoilers. Starting off with the positives. Co-MVPs for me are awarded to Avon Vellani as Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, and Monica Rambeau, Tiana Paris. They are fantastic. Now, if you have seen Miss Marvel, this is a continuation of that. All the stuff I love from that show, her personality, her charm, her charisma, her family, all that goodness is injected in this film, and she's fantastic, as well as Tiana Paris. She is just so great in this movie. She has that mama bear energy protecting Miss Marvel, but also that kind of animosity she has with uh, Carol is very much highlighted in this film. But the biggest thing I want to give them props for them is allowing Captain Marvel to actually be an interesting character what did you know what an academy award-winning actress has personality and has acting range like they definitely level up captain marvel they make her so much more fleshed out they make her more of an interesting character more so than her original film so not only were they great but they also elevated the main character which is something i really enjoyed I gotta admit, the action is way better this time around. Seeing the switching of the powers and some really cool fight choreography scenes. Like, this isn't like Civil War or Winter Soldier type of levels of like visceral fighting, but it's a fun visual aesthetic when you see the powers on full display. Also, the 145 runtime that everyone was worried about, the film breezed by, has really good pacing. And Nia DaCosta, who again, the media is trying to throw her under the bus. Oh, she wasn't directing a film, bunch of nonsense. They let her cook. I'm a Nia DaCosta fan fan i love little woods i wasn't the fan of the Candyman film but i love her as a director and they allowed her to make a comic book film like if you are a fan of comics this feels like a comic booky film like that time where captain marvel and photon or should i say monica rambeau and miss marvel went in space to stop this you know space time continuing to stop like it reminds me of a comic and nia's just having fun with this film and without spoilers this actually has bigger ties to the greater mcu than both both Multiverse of Madness as well as was it Ant-Man 3, Quantumanium, like those films made it seem like they were going to be important to the MCU, but they really didn't. This film actually has consequences. This film actually plays much bigger into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially when it comes to the multiverse. Now, negatives. I found the story to be uneven, a bit generic, and we've seen this kind of before within the actual MCU, especially when you have the villainous film who's like, they're trying to play the sympathetic card of giving you a reason why the villain's doing what they're doing, but unfortunately, the villain is very unmemorable, and it reminded me a lot of like Ronan, just like a really good actor, with some interesting concepts but they just don't execute like the menacing nature of the villain and also not all the jokes land there's one particular scene that i just would have cut completely out of the film and i love sam jackson don't get me wrong y'all but he is kind of becoming like the Hulk where it's just like he's a joke and it's like I wish that Nick Fury was a little bit more serious in these movies because at this point it's just Sam Jackson just being Sam Jackson with an eye patch. Final thoughts here I'm very curious for those that see this film if they haven't seen Miss Marvel or WandaVision if they're going to be confused with this movie because the film does a little bit of a recap of like hey this is Monica this is how she got her powers this is Kamala Khan this is how she got his powers also it kind of lets you know what, what Captain Marvel's been up to but I'm very interested to see for those that haven't been and keeping up with the MCU if they're able to follow along with the story. And if you are an MCU fan, you already know the drill. Don't walk away. Don't go away when the post credit scene comes around because it actually has weight. <laughs> it is a very exciting post credit scene. I'll just leave it at that. Overall, wrapping this up, look, I'm not in the camp that the MCU is dead. I was never there to begin with, but I'm also not going to sit here and be like, oh, this is the greatest thing of all time. I'll just say I have fun with this film. And at the end of the day, the Marvels isn't the train wreck that the media has been trying to push it out to be. Sure, the story is a bit of a mess and a little bit uneven at times, and the villain is not memorable, but Miss Marvel and Monica Rambeau carried this film but more importantly they made Captain Marvel more interesting. This is way better than the 2019 Captain Marvel and has much bigger MCU world building to the multiverse than both Multiverse of Madness and Ant-Man Quantumanium combined. It is not perfect by any means, but don't let the negativity surrounding this film stop you from enjoying this fun, action-packed space trip with three characters that actually have great chemistry. So those are my initial thoughts. I'm going to actually shoot my full review after this video, so keep an eye out for that coming soon. But hey, take it as you will. Let me know if you all are excited to see this film. And of course, once you've seen it, share your thoughts in the comments below. I had a good time with this film, and I'm really excited to talk more about the Marvels.